And it's the last part of this little mini series that I'm putting together. We mm -hmm. talked about protons, we talked about neutrons, we talked about electrons. But I also want to talk about what that kind of meant in terms of what they thought atoms looked like from the beginning and now. So from the start all the way. Which again, is a cool thing. So way back when, the first one again was Dalton. Dalton thought that atoms were just solid spheres. That they're little billy building blocks that make up things. Think of it as a really, really small Lego. No positive part, no negative part, just these little itty bitty things that add up. That's all it was. Thompson came around, and we talked about this in the last video, that plum pudding model, where he thought there's just a bunch of little negatives surrounded by this positive space or this positive ooze. And plum pudding is a very popular uh, snack way back then in England. Um, and it's literally what you think it is, pudding with plums in it. So kind of think it like that, that jumbo example we did before. But then there were flaws with this too. Rutherford came by and then was like, okay, the nucleus is positive in the center, and there's electrons on the outside. He started to talk about this idea that they're circling, circling the nucleus, getting there a little bit more. This is something you might recognize a little bit more than these two, which is kind of cool. The Niles Bohr. Niles Bohr was a fantastic Danish scientist, um, one of the best of his time. A woman named after him, phenomenal. And he started to realize that there were these orbitals and energy levels that were starting to take place. For example, the first ring of electrons can only hold two, and then we go up to eight. So he started originating this idea of rings on top of each other and that the electrons are going to space themselves out appropriately. Again, starting to mention orbitals just a little bit. To what we kind of call it now, which is the quantum model. That's where the quantum numbers come in, things like that. Essentially, this is positive, and the electrons are randomly somewhere. We don't know where. This kind of implies the ring thing, and this is kind of that seventh and eighth grade thing you might have picked up. This, however, and again, we've seen these before, this is talking about the different orbitals that can occur. So the d orbitals, the p orbitals, S orbitals and F orbitals. So again, we can't predict where electrons are, but they're occupying this kind of space. And that's where the quantum model came in. So I just wanted to do a little video just showing the history of it and kind of where we were going. I thought it'd be a good summary. Um, kind of cool when you think about it. Um, again, we've already talked about this a little bit. Just because it has the word quantum in it doesn't mean it has to be necessarily challenging. Hope you like this little mini series and have a great rest of your day.